Thank you very much. Um, I think you'll see that I'm something of a sandwich filler between the Icelandic Met Office and the Icelandic Civil Protection. Um, so what I hope to do is just demonstrate slightly my perspective of what's going on in Iceland, but also my perspective, as Aoife's just said, as a scientist and a user of all the information coming out of Iceland. Like many of the European participants in this research project, when things happen in Iceland, I'm consulted by people in the UK about what's happening. Um, and I know this is the case in Norway and Italy and many other places. So it's in my interest that this project generates the sort of information that I need to get at to provide the UK government, for example, with the information that they need. So this talk is about the integration of science and research with um, basically all the users that there are, including all of us in this room. But it also it all moves on to mitigation of risks as well. So it's a very big picture. Um, and basically what I hope everybody here today has already demonstrated, but I'm going to emphasize, is how we have here in Future Vault this seamless chain of observations, interpretation, and dissemination. And I think we've already heard that the dissemination is not just from scientists, this is from also civil protection. And you also heard in a talk before that even the public are involved in the science. So even the people being disseminated to are potentially part of the research. Yeah. <laughs> Point it in the right direction. So volcanic hazards. We've heard a lot about volcanic hazards already. Um, Obviously, this began as a result of the events of 2010, lots of disruption. Um, but as we've heard, volcanic environments, they're multi-hazard. You can have proximal hazards, um, floods, lava flows, distal hazards, ash, gas. Um, impacts can be local, up to global. Um, and there's a need for the hazards modelling, hazards mapping, hazards assessments, and then scenarios to help manage hazards in both real time and over the longer term. Um, we've heard a lot about the volcano monitoring, all different aspects of it, um, from the Iceland Met Office and the contributions of other people in FutureVolt to the monitoring. Um, and very importantly, there's different aspects to that. There's the collection of the data. Um, and everything we've heard from so many different disciplines, um, everything from geophysics, geochemistry, earth observation, subsurface, ground, space, all aspects of, of data that you can collect. Um, and then we know that it's not just about data. You have to do something with data. You have to process it. You have to understand it. You have to know what the limitations are. You need to know about each specific volcanic system, as Evgenia was saying. They're all different. They all have their unique aspects. So it's all also about the geology, the mapping, the history. Um, and then there's all the technology, keeping the equipment going, the models, analysis, interpretation, all the knowledge around the data and the people involved in collecting it. And then there's the whole purpose of the whole thing, which is to benefit society. Um, we are all society, so we're benefiting others and ourselves. Um, and as I said before, this is about the long term as well as the short term. So not only are we responding to unrest in events, we're planning for the next five years, the next ten years, so that everything is in place for when the next thing happens. And again, as we've heard, a lot of the products coming out of Future Volk are not just traditional things. They're very innovative, targeted products that have come out of discussion right before the project. So the project has been designed to produce them. Einar is going to come back to this in the next talk. But this project was designed to meet the needs of our known stakeholders and users. Um, so we talked a bit about monitoring, a bit about data. Um, of course, civil protection contingencies is the second part of my title. Um, as we all know, contingency planning is something we all need to do. It's not just civil protection. All institutions, all individuals, all should be thinking in terms of contingency planning. Um, this is the professional end of it. So, and they are dealing, of course, in Iceland with preparedness, anticipation, communication. We've heard all about how, as first responders, even the 
um, in Iceland, it's not just the civil protection um, that's getting involved in the monitoring, it's also the fire brigade, the coast guard, all sorts of different um, elements of society. Back in 2010, after the Eyjafjallajökull eruption, I came over and was lucky enough to have a tour of the National Crisis Centre in, in Reykjavik. And even before the project, I was blown away by the interaction between civil protection and scientists here, how it was always very strongly integrated. So in fact, FutureVolk had a very strong base on which to build. And I think what we've done though is just make absolutely the best of that. And so building on that very strong foundation, what we've now added to that is this expanse of researchers across Europe also feeding into what was already a pretty effective system. Um, the picture here, there's obviously that's the civil protection in Iceland, in Reykjavik, but also there one of the outputs, which is an access map um, as a result of the lava flows, so managing access to the site, both for scientists who are studying it and also the public. Um, so we've also heard that, you know, when it comes to an event, often the questions are very simple. Um, so we've had a few of those in our talks today. Where, when, what, how big, how fast. Um, they're pretty straightforward questions on the surface, but to answer these questions, of course, is very, very difficult in most cases. There's a lot of complex science behind it. The challenge, though, is to answer these questions as simply as possible. And I think that's what one of the things that FutureVolk has been achieving. What look on the surface to be very simple products, like Sarah's gas forecasts, as she said, behind them is some very complex science, dealing with the data that goes into it, understanding the model to produce them. And the challenge to scientists, and I think people here have achieved this very well, is to make their very complex science look very simple. So here's some of the complex data that we've heard about. Lots of dots on maps, loads of earthquakes, making sense of this in real time. This is what FutureVolk is achieving, getting this multitude of data across different disciplines um, and helping the people who have to make scientific decisions actually reach those decisions in a timely manner. And I put up here, it's not just about knowledge and data. Um, notice at the end of this, the relationships and contacts. Um, you can't really be effective in anything if you don't have strong relationships. Um, and that's, that's something I'll come back to at the end. Um, and we also heard from Andy Hooper earlier about how you can effectively integrate data. And that is, again, one of the innovative things out of this project actually integrating these different types of data so they can be fully understood. Okay, so what's the purpose? To make alerts and early warning. This is the aviation colour code. Um, and really, this is the scientific end. The alert levels coming out of the ICE and Met Office are for the aviation sector. So this is for across Europe. But also this supports what's going on in Iceland. And again, this is an example of a very simple looking project. But again, if you think about what's behind it, what are the decisions scientists have to make about whether to increase these alert levels? And there's a great deal of discussion um, going into that. It's a good example of a simple product with a lot of good science behind it. And civil protection, they also have alert phases. Um, which are also helping to manage these situations, this interaction we've already heard about. They're issuing reports as well. They're on social media, but also dealing with things at a European level as a result of the Future Vault project in particular. Here's the gas um, forecast from um, Zara. Um, this is the Facebook page that Einar has developed. There we go. And then interaction at a European level with the European Civil Protection Forum, for example, that the Icelandic Met Office and um, Civil Protection were just at. Another example of a product that's come out recently is the Scientific Advisory Board report. Again, it looks simple, but this contains a lot of the information that users across Europe have said they want. 
Um, if you're actually looking for a report to see what's going on, it has everything, or did do, through the Holothroin Bathamunga eruption, from air quality to future scenarios, quantitative information, and it was coming out regularly. You really couldn't want for more. Um, this is another quick look at Sarah's gas forecasting, which was so good. Um, we all know about the aviation. Um, again, this is just to show that the, the future vault work packages have dealt with key things for the volcanic ash advisory centres. Data for the ice and catalogue is helping with that point before the eruptions quite started where you need to put data into models. Um, and that historical data is allowing that to happen. And then this project is making sure that all the parameters you need to run the models in real time is, is hopefully going to be produced. We'll see when we have our next ash eruption. Oh. Jumping around. So the, the next talk is going to be from ANAR, and this is from the Civil Protection. And this is just a quick jump ahead to that. We've got a work package three. It's on communications and supporting risk management. Um, and the point about this is that a lot of the people in this, there's the ISA Met Office, Civil Protection, the UK Met Office, University of Iceland and BGS, we're all people who have been responding to eruptions in different ways, and that is a key point of this um, particular work package. The work in it is social science research. We've heard a lot about physical science today, but there's also social science research going on in this, in this project, and I think that's very important. It's not just about different disciplines, um, it's also different types of research. The very first thing that was done in this work package was to send questionnaires across Europe to actually gather the needs of people. And just some very quick lessons learned for that is the need across Europe by many different people for early warning, regular official reporting, um, specific needs of specific sectors, and thus access to reliable background information. And you've seen today how we've already dealt with those needs. So, what an opportunity, but what a challenge, and I think FutureVolx achieved it. 26 institutions, 10 countries. It's all about collaboration, coordination, um, and I think it's gone extremely well from my perspective. Um, but it's also about this wider context. We heard first thing this morning about GEO and the Committee of Earth Observation Satellites. Um, but there's something else as well at an international scale, and this is the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. And this is also um, helping to um, approach some of those aspects. So I just highlight here this need to anticipate, plan for, and reduce disaster risk. We're helping with this anticipation and planning aspect for disaster risk reduction. And then here again, cooperation at a transboundary scale at least, and then sub-regional and regional and international. Again, FutureVolk is doing that. So, seamless chain of observations, interpretation, dissemination. These are just some examples. The monitoring, the observations, um, maps of the lava flows coming from Iceland Met Office, the University of Iceland, um, and the researchers in FutureVolk. This is some of the work coming out of the University of Iceland and others. Multiple methods going into creating these products to help with the response. Again, seismic data from the Icelandic Met Office, University of Iceland, FutureVolk. Um, nice products here comparing the lava from the Holkorine eruption to the Larkey eruption. Nice and simple for people so they can understand the context and, as I say, some of these um, um, targeted reports. So, just a summary, um, FutureVolk has enabled this strong interaction between volcano scientists and civil protection, which was already there, but it's been enhanced. Um, this state-of-the-art research that we've heard about today and the knowledge really is contributing to real-time response, not just in Iceland, but for those of us across Europe. Um, all these data that we need, the parameters, the outputs, the products of the science, are being distributed currently in a timely manner. We'll see for the next ash eruption if we can keep that up. Um, but crucially, it's collaboration and coordination that really matters here. Thank you.